Previously at the House of Hypertrophy, we introduced a 2017 review study out of the USA that made bold statements about how long it takes for muscle growth to plateau. They suggest growth of the upper and lower body muscles plateaus within three months, with trained individuals unlikely to see further appreciable muscle growth. We noted how the experiments used to support these controversial conclusions had limitations. None of them mentioned and thus likely optimized nutritional factors such as calorie and protein intake, two things crucial for long-term muscle growth. And all of them, although applying progressive overload, had subjects train each muscle with only one exercise, involved no rep range variation, and no change in the number of sets performed. These are limitations as some exercise variety per muscle group may be beneficial for sustaining long-term gains and growing more regions across a muscle. Moreover, some evidence suggests training with a variety of rep ranges could lead to more long-term muscle growth. Finally, increasing set numbers seems to be an effective way to potentiate muscle growth and get past plateaus in trained individuals. However, I still saw a few people in the comments dejected that there's evidence muscle growth may show plateau signs within three months, with some even saying this is why PEDs are useful. Needless to say, this is not what I wanted people to take away. I was trying to demonstrate that by optimizing your training, sustained long-term natural muscle growth is absolutely possible. Nonetheless, I've searched the literature even further and would like to share a few of my findings that I believe can be highly useful and informative for those wishing to develop their physiques. Moreover, all the upcoming data should make you rest assured natural muscle growth can progress for a long time. We'll be touching on factors such as body recomposition, sleep, individualization, and the power of the mind. This is going to be a fun one, let's get into it. Before going further, a little about our sponsor, Atlas VPN. Chances are you love training, we all do, but recovery is important too. There's no better way to recover than relaxing and watching your favourite shows while downing a protein shake. But we all know streaming platforms restrict access to shows based on your location. Atlas VPN can help you out. A VPN encrypts your internet connection and allows you to relocate yourself. If a streaming platform only streams a show in a certain country, simply use Atlas VPN to relocate yourself to that country. Right now and not for very long, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. You can get a 3 year subscription for just $1.83 a month, plus 3 months for free with a 30 day money back guarantee. Atlas VPN also provides you with incredible security, blocking malicious links, ads and trackers. Atlas VPN is compatible with all your devices. Again, you can get a 3 year subscription for just $1.83 a month, plus 3 months free with a 30 day money back guarantee. Link in the description. Thank you to Atlas VPN for supporting the House of Hypertrophy. Back to the video. In the previous video, I noted alongside protein intake, Eating more calories to put you in a surplus leads to greater muscle growth in previously untrained and trained folks. The importance of a caloric surplus for maximizing muscle growth becomes greater the more trained you get. For one reason or another, many folks may not like a surplus due to the associated fat gain. Fortunately, the literature demonstrates that trained individuals can still experience good muscle mass gains with little to no fat accrual. Provided protein intake is in the recommended range of 1.6, to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. A 2006 study out of Australia recruited trained men who bench pressed an average 84 kilograms and back squatted an average 80 kilograms. In other words, they skipped leg day. Subjects trained this program for 10 weeks. Subjects did not increase their calories versus before the study and were likely not in a surplus. One group of subjects supplemented with whey protein, while another group supplemented with casein. Both groups ultimately consumed around 2 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight daily. The whey supplement group saw a concurrent increase in lean mass with decreases in fat mass, while the casein group saw smaller increases in lean mass with little change in fat mass. This study seemingly indicates whey protein is superior to casein, yet I should note another study found both to be similar. Thus, the differences in this study could just be related to the small sample sizes. 
In any event, I mentioned this data to demonstrate that trained individuals can still experience a good increase in lean mass with little changes or even decreases in fat mass. A 2015 study out of the USA recruited 32 trained men who squatted 120 kilograms, benched 102 kilograms, and deadlifted 158 kilograms. These subjects didn't seem to skip leg day. Subjects trained this program for four weeks, with one group supplementing some mixed ingredient supplement, while another group took a placebo. Unfortunately, calorie and protein intakes were not mentioned, but both the supplement and placebo group saw increases in lean mass with little changes in fat mass. The placebo group actually tended to lose fat. So again, this study demonstrates that trained individuals can see good increases in lean mass with little changes or decreases in fat mass. A 2018 study out of the USA recruited 28 trained men who squatted 138 kilograms, benched 103 kilograms, and deadlifted 163 kilograms. All subjects performed the same number of sets per week on their exercises, but one group trained their exercises with a frequency of three times per week, while another group trained their exercises with a frequency of six times per week. Calorie and protein intakes were unfortunately not mentioned, but both groups similarly increased fat-free mass. The greater gains for the six times group were non-significant, while fat decreased in the three times group with minimal changes in the six times group. Finally, a 2019 study out of Brazil recruited 23 trained men who bench pressed 103 kilograms and squatted 132 kilograms. One group trained with a bro split style routine, while another group trained with a full body routine. The number of sets performed on each exercise per week was the same between groups. Subjects were consuming what appeared to be maintenance calories, and they consumed around 1.9 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight daily. Ultimately, both groups similarly increased lean mass. Fat mass was not mentioned, but given subjects were eating around maintenance, fat mass gains are unlikely. So, these studies collectively demonstrate that trained individuals are capable of increasing lean mass with little to no fat changes, provided protein intake is sufficient. Moreover, as alluded to by some of the data, body recomposition, that is, increasing muscle while losing fat, is also possible in trained individuals. There's ample literature indicating body recomposition can occur in trained individuals. To set this up, you may do the following. Firstly, a caloric deficit is your surest bet to ensure fat loss, but too much of a deficit will impair lean mass gains. A recent 2021 meta-analysis indicates a 500 calorie deficit may be the point where lean mass gains cease when resistance training, so a deficit smaller than 500 calories is recommended. Secondly, ensuring adequate protein intake in the range of 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight is likely required. Of course, the more and more trained you get, the more difficult it is to attain body recomposition. But so long as you're not super advanced and really close to your genetic ceiling, the literature overviewed convincingly demonstrates that trained individuals can see gains in muscle mass with little change or decreases in fat mass. As a final point for this section, recall that the review study mentioned that the start of the video indicated trained individuals are unlikely to see further appreciable gains. Yet all the data we've overviewed in this section strongly oppose this, the trained individual saw appreciable adaptations. In the studies that review study used to support the idea muscle growth plateaus in three months, none of them mentioned sleep. The fact is sleep matters for adaptations. It may be even more important for adaptations if you're eating at a maintenance or a deficit. A 2018 study out of the USA recruited 36 individuals classed as obese and had them reduce their caloric intake by 29-43%. to Group 1 slept as normal, sleeping around 6-7 to seven hours per night. Group 2 slept 1 hour less than usual for 5 days a week. This ended up in them sleeping 5-6 to six hours per night, while during the other 2 days of the week, they slept however long they wanted. This ended up being 7-8 to eight hours of sleep. After 8 weeks, both groups lost similar body mass. However, 
Group 1 who slept normally lost way more fat mass than muscle mass, while Group 2 lost way more muscle mass than fat mass. Now, neither group lifted weights and the subjects were untrained obese individuals. But still, this study powerfully demonstrates how just one hour of sleep restriction for five days a week negatively impacts body composition changes. Other research demonstrates sleep restriction lowers muscle protein synthesis, increases cortisol, a catabolic hormone, and lowers testosterone, an anabolic hormone. So ensuring you attain a sufficient quantity and quality of sleep is important for promoting long-term muscle and fat tissue alterations. Something I wish I did in the previous video was present research showing trained individuals still respond well to training. There's ample evidence finding this, and this research directly opposes that review study's hypothesis that trained individuals will not experience further appreciable adaptations. Now, we've already overviewed some of the research with the literature finding that trained individuals still experience good lean mass gains even without a caloric surplus. But I think it's useful to look at some more, and some of these upcoming studies will provide further useful information. This 2019 study out of Brazil recruited 20 trained men with an average 94kg bench press and an average 125kg back squat. One group trained their muscles once a week, while another twice a week. The number of exercise sets performed each week was the same between groups. Ultimately, both groups saw comparable and notable increases in triceps, biceps, vastus lateralis, and anterior quadriceps growth. The percentage gains range from 5-11% to in thickness, which is still notable, and non-trivial gains. A 2015 study out of New York recruited 18 men with an average bench press of around 101kg and a back squat of 121kg. Subjects trained these exercises for 3 sets per session, thrice per week for 8 weeks. Group 1 trained with 8-12 to reps to failure per set, and a second group with 25-35 to reps to failure. Ultimately, both groups saw comparable and notable increases in biceps, triceps, and quadriceps for morous growth. The percentages range from 5 to 9% in thickness. Another 2016 study out of New York recruited 13 men with an average 93kg bench press and an average 118kg back squat. Subjects trained these exercises for 3 sets of 8 to 12 reps to failure per session, thrice per week for 8 weeks. One group rested 3 minutes between sets, a second group rested 1 minute between sets. Ultimately, both groups saw gains in biceps, triceps, anterior quadriceps, and vastus lateralis, but the gains were greater for the group resting for 3 minutes. This finding is consistent with the rest of the literature. With compound exercises specifically, compound exercises were mainly trained in this study. 2.5 to 3 minutes of rest tends to produce greater muscle growth versus shorter rest durations. This finding emphasizes how optimizing variables can meaningfully promote greater growth in trained individuals. Another notable variable is individualizing your exercise selection. Not everyone has the same anatomy and preferences, and this can matter for muscle growth. We covered this in a previous video, but it's worth briefly overviewing this interesting study again. 17 men who back squatted an average 140 kilograms and bench pressed an average 110 kilograms were recruited. Subjects were assigned to a fixed or auto-regulated group. The fixed group was given this program to train weekly. The auto-regulated group was free to select what exercises they wanted to train per muscle group each session from a wide list. All other training variables were the same between groups. By the end of the 9-week study duration, lean body mass gains were greater for the auto-regulated group. Presumably, at least some of this result is due to trained individuals having a good understanding of what exercises work best for them, leading to better muscle adaptations. So individualizing your exercise selection can be important. A seriously underrated aspect of progressing in anything, including muscle and strength, is your mindset. There's compelling research demonstrating the power your mind can have on your gains. I have a whole video on the research behind this, feel free to check that out. But to give you an idea, 
This study included powerlifters who benched an average 189 kilograms, squatted an average 257 kilograms, and deadlifted an average 260 kilograms. So these subjects were very, very strong. Prior to testing one rep maxes again on these exercises, the researchers gave the powerlifters immediate acting steroids. However, the subjects were unaware it was not steroids at all, rather just a mere placebo pill. After taking the fake steroids, all subjects hit personal records. The subjects one rep maxes were an average 9.5 kilograms higher on the bench press, 12.2 kilograms higher on the squat, and 10.9 kilograms higher on the deadlift versus baseline. Fascinatingly, the authors noted these performance increases represented a change from being nationally ranked to being internationally ranked for all subjects. These results demonstrate the potency of the mind. The subjects did not consume steroids, it was a placebo, meaning the added strength gains came from within the subjects, they held that capacity within them. Again, feel free to check out our whole video on the mind, but due to all this, I think it's essential for individuals to stay optimistic on their muscle and strength building journey. It's likely detrimental to have the mindset you're going to plateau or you can't progress much further. For the majority of the people watching this, this is probably not true anyway. I think it's best to establish a mindset believing you have more potential than you previously believed. With all the added information in this video, I hope everyone rest assured that muscle growth can very much continue well in the long term. We've gone through numerous areas of the literature demonstrating that trained individuals still experience notable muscle growth, and this evidence disproves that review study's conclusions that trained individuals will not see further appreciable growth. We've touched on how even in the absence of a caloric surplus, trained individuals can still see notable lean mass gains. We also noted the importance of sleep for muscle and fat mass alterations. Finally, don't underestimate the power of your mind. Thank you.